Um, this is a uh, this is an ode <laughs> to a body part. <laughs> I'm not sure it measures up, but uh, to the one we heard last night. Um, but um, it's an ode to the ear because because in thinking about the about the ear, which I was one time, and thinking about the eye. Um, if, you, if, if something is happening and you don't want to watch it, you can close your eyes, like you're in a scary movie or, you know, your, your friend is driving too fast. Uh, but you can't do that with your ears. I mean, you can put your hands over your ears, but there's this kind of innocence about, about the ear and, and, uh, and about the way it, it, it takes everything in. So uh, I wrote this poem for the ear, Ode to the Ear. This one's for you, winged skull blossom, opening into the world, for the gold post held in your fleshy lobe, for the ledges of blood swollen inward. Here's to the whirling sounds of the wind, spilling the dead crepe myrtle leaves over the hedgerow and garden. I heard the clock tower's thick tones reach into the blue void of Sunday, where I faltered, thinking of winter. The past, with its sunset-rouged face, its décolletage and long opera gloves, absinthe and tap water, fireplace and roof gable, French doors shedding the rain. Why should it bring such comfort, listening to typing in the next room, the lost notes gathered and tended? The right ear faces up in the darkness. Here's to its fluids and delicate timpani, Here's to its waxes and hairs, helpless to close out this rhythmic tapping. It listens and hears and believes.